Hey, what's up friends? Cryptochronica here coming at you with a new tutorial all about aleatoric generative sound design in Sampler. Cool. So what does that mean? Basically, I want to show you how to create a generative patch, a patch that's going to come up with its own ideas, and we're going to use aleatoric music in this process. Aleatoric music is when you use some element of randomity in the composition process to spew out the idea. So, this is what we're going to be creating, or at least something similar to this. Of course, it's random, so it's going to be a little different. Cool, so this technique's really useful for uh, genres that make a lot of heavy use of hocketing, whereby the different voices take different positions in the checkerboard pattern. So. Let's get right into it. The very first thing that we're going to use aleatoric sound design for is to come up with uh, the MIDI notes themselves. So I'm going to drop onto this operator sample here, uh, this operator patch, uh, an arpeggiator set with the style to random so that every different note that comes out of this is going to be random. Cool. Next, I'm going to hit it with yet another random MIDI effect. The chance is turned all the way up to 100%, but my choices have been constrained so that I only have uh, four options as opposed to every note of the scale. Sounds terrible, sounds keyless, and it sounds completely random, as we'd expect. But if you follow up this configuration with a scale plugin, in this case I'm using the D-Awato scale that we all have living inside of our MIDI effects underneath our scale folder, uh, this is going to force all the notes that these random um, arpeggiators are generating into some kind of scale that we recognize as harmonically coherent. Cool. Now, so that we're not stuck in this eighth note subdivision land forever, I've also mapped another random LFO to the rate of the arpeggiator. So that way we get 12th notes, 8th notes, and 16th notes all spewed out by this. Now in this new MIDI channel that I've armed in and have set to take input from the source above, I'm going to resample my bass line as it comes out. Let's go for it. Oh, I guess we've got to arm the track. Here we go. So the reason I like getting the MIDI out like this is because then we can use our typical MIDI uh, features like reversing or inverting or stretching or legatoing to come up with a line that we actually like. I'm going to set our scale correctly here to D Awato, and then what we can do is we can actually quantize. Because my beat itself doesn't have any triplets in it, it's uh, kind of straight, there's no twelfths or twenty-fourth subdivisions, and because of that the triplets that are being generated by the arpeggiator aren't really going to work. So if we select all our notes with command A, and then we use option command U, we're going to, oh whoops, I guess it's shift command U, we're going to be able to quantize here. There we go. Sweet, so I'm just setting everything to the nearest 16th note, and now I can pick and choose the parts that I want. So let's say I like this as my idea. Cool, I'm going to start with that as idea one, duplicate it over, and make a change to the second part of the pattern so that we're still following uh, the formula of iterative sequencing. Take the entire idea, duplicate it out, and of course I will make a change to the second part of the uh, uh, of the duplicate, so that way we always are creating along this kind of fractal of new ideas. And very quickly, I'm able to come up with a baseline. Now, let's just check out what came out like that. Cool, so maybe I like that, maybe I don't, but it's really easy to come up with notes this way. In this case, I'm going to stick with the original baseline that I had generated in advance. Cool. Now, inside of Sampler, let's use more randomity to spew out lots of different voices across this melody. So that even though this melody is going to play the same notes, every hit of those notes is going to generate a different voice. So inside of Sampler, inside my zone tab, I've loaded up a bunch of Leviathan basses, cheers and shout out to Leviathan, all tuned to uh, the root note C, and I've tuned that over here as well. You can do this by selecting all the notes, or selecting all the bass one shots, right clicking, distribute the ranges equally across the entire piano roll so that we have lots of voices. And then grab the root note down over here and you can move this baby up and down and just watch those little r's move across all the piano rolls so that way you can see uh, that you're aligned on that center c2 right there sweet okay cool and so now if i didn't have this lfo on uh, i would get a bunch of different sounds in here but they're mostly restricted to the ranges of the piano roll that are being played inside of the midi notes here 
and that's not making full use of all of these great voices that I have. And so what I want to do is I want to get the piano roll to shift up and down as the notes play, thereby triggering different relative voices as the note changes. So the way that we can do that is inside of our pitch oscillator tab, if you map an LFO to this zone shift, think of this zone shift as taking all of those piano notes and shifting them up and down as the LFO oscillates. So now we're going to get lots of different voices getting spewed out by this. As we are listening, let's also record. So that way we can make good use of our time. And as our sound is recording, what I want to do is I want to get a bunch of takes as this plays. So that way I can comp together a final sort of uh, product from those different takes. Let's go for it. Here's our audio coming in. Let's get at least two or three takes. You might want to try this. So now, inside of this new audio channel it was recording, I have a bunch of different takes that I can comp together. So to reveal your takes, it's Option Command U. And now all I have to use is my Bencil, my B pen. If you hit B, you get your little pen icon. That's called a Bencil. Who knew? Uh, anyway, once you pull up your little Bencil, what you can do is you can just click in the parts of the audio that you like and come up with patterns this way. Now, if we wanted to apply the iterative sequence to this, uh, this process, let's go ahead and say we like that as idea one. Oh, let's turn off this and start to check our work. Okay, cool. I like that first idea. So that's going to be idea one for me. I'm going to duplicate the whole thing over. And to make a variation, I'm just going to punch in this little piece of audio that looks interesting right here. Sweet. Now, the second time around, our note is going higher, but we don't need to worry about that. Let's take our baseline, duplicate it over, and vary it up some. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this bit of audio, and that space looks really tasteful. I love using silence as an instrument in my compositions. So we'll hit it with the silence, and let's check out our final product. <laughs> Cool. So you can see how quick this process is to allow Ableton to do the heavy lifting of generating when you're not feeling particularly creative. And all you have to do as the producer is curate the ideas that Ableton has spit out of this aliot aleatoric <laughs> generative process. Anyway, hope you learned something. So good to see you all. And I would love to hear anything that you make using this process. So go ahead and just uh, shoot it over to me in my DMs. Shakaloha.